guys, welcome back to this channel. Nice to see you all again. And for today's video, we'll talk about topic 7.3 intermolecular forces. And for this part of video, we'll talk about polarity. What is actually polarity? That's the big question. Polarity is actually the charge distribution between atom in the molecule. And the use of the polarity is to determine whether we have a polar molecule or we have a non-polar molecule. So the question over here is, how can we determine whether the molecule is polar or the molecule is non-polar? The polarity of the molecule will depend on a dipole moment that we have a symbol mu. Dipole moment is the quantitative measure of the polarity of a bond. And for the polar molecule, the mu must not equals to zero. While for the non-polar molecule, the mu, the dipole moment, must be equals to zero. But how do we get the dipole moment? How do we know the dipole moment is equals to zero or not equals to zero? It will depend on bond dipole. What is actually bond dipole? It's the electronegativity difference between the bonding atom. I show you a very simple example over here. I have HCl. So what would be the bond dipole of this bond? Obviously, the bond dipole is obviously for a bond. So I have a bond between hydrogen and chlorine. And what would be the bond dipole of this? The bond dipole for this bond is like this. Why is the bond dipole moving from hydrogen to chlorine? Because hydrogen is less electronegative. While for chlorine, chlorine over here is more electro negative so your bond dipole is the electronegativity difference between the bonding atom for this bond the bond dipole is moving from hydrogen to chlorine because chlorine is more electronegative and this is the symbol that we use to represent the bond dipole and by that in mind we always move from a lower electronegativity to a higher electronegativity and if i have another example over here cl cl if I have a CLCL over here, what will happen to this bond? Is there any bond dipole? There will be no bond dipole. Why there is no bond dipole? Because the electronegativity is the same. When the electronegativity is the same, there will be no differences. The distribution will be even. When the distribution is even, there is no partially positive or partially negative. Therefore, no bond dipole. Okay, so that is bond dipole. And the symbol that we use over here is this. When the bond dipole does not cancel off each other in a molecule, then it will become a polar molecule because you cannot cancel off each other. There is still dipole moment. So it will be a more polar molecule. And like what we have learned just now, when it's a polar molecule, mu not equals to zero. Vice versa, when the bond dipole can cancel off each other, then it will become a non-polar molecule. And since it's a non-polar molecule, then mu will equal to zero. But the question is, how do I know whether the bond dipole can cancel off each other or cannot cancel off each other? It will depend on one thing, the molecular geometry of your Lewis structure. So it's very important to draw your Lewis structure correctly and to determine the correct molecular geometry because your polarity will be depends on the correct molecular geometry. This is some simple step to determine the polarity of a molecule. First and foremost, you need to know the shape is symmetrical or not. A bit of tips over here, all your basic geometry, they are symmetrical. Why symmetrical is important? Because if the molecule geometry is symmetrical, they might be able to cancel off the bond dipole, okay? But before we determine whether the bond dipole can be cancelled off or not, we need to make sure the terminal atom is same or is not. Because if the terminal atom is different, then the bond dipole will also be different, okay? Let's say if the shape is symmetrical, yes, and the terminal atom is also the same, all the terminal atom is the same, therefore, your bond dipole can cancel off each other. When they can cancel off each other, that means your dipole moment mu will be equal to zero. Then it will be a non-polar molecule. Can you see? 
So if the shape is symmetrical, all the terminal atoms is the same, the bond dipole can cancel off each other, the mu equals to zero, then it will become a nonpolar molecule. So you need to know whether your shape is symmetrical or not. And this is the tips that I can give to you. All the basic geometry that you learn, they are symmetrical. So let's look at some example. So I have a BCL3 over here, and this is my Lewis structure. So there is a few things that you need to check. The shape. Is the shape symmetrical? It's a basic geometry over here, trigonal planar with no lone pair in the centratum. Therefore, the shape is symmetrical. When the shape is symmetrical, the next thing that you check, the terminal atom. All the terminal atom right now is chlorine. So your terminal atom is also the same. Your bond dipole. Between boron and chlorine, your bond dipole moving towards who? Moving towards chlorine. It will be moving towards chlorine, moving towards chlorine, and moving towards chlorine. Because chlorine is more electronegative than boron. Although there is bond dipole, but since the shape is symmetrical, the atom is the same, therefore the bond dipole will be able to cancel off each other. When the bond dipole can cancel off each other, automatically your mu will equal to zero, and therefore the molecule will be non-polar. Simple. With one condition, guys, your Lewis structure must be in the correct geometry. Next. We have tetrahedral. Let's look at this example that I give to you. The example for tetrahedral today, CHCl3. And this is the Lewis structure of my CHCl3. First and foremost, we look at the shape. The shape is a tetrahedral, which is your basic geometry. Therefore, your shape over here is also symmetrical. Your terminal atom over here, you have Cl, 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 but a hydrogen. So your terminal atom is different. The bond dipole, that is the most important part. Draw the bond dipole. The bond dipole between carbon and Cl, of course, towards Cl. Towards Cl. And towards Cl. Okay? And carbon and hydrogen over here. Carbon and hydrogen, this bond is a non-polar. Okay? It's a non-polar bond. Why? Because the electron negativity between carbon and hydrogen are very similar. When the electron negativity between carbon and hydrogen are similar, there will be no bond dipole over here for this bond. And since the terminal atom is different, and carbon hydrogen don't have a bond dipole, but carbon chlorine having bond dipole, therefore bond dipole does not cancel off each other. And when the bond dipole don't cancel off each other, you will then have something called net dipole moment. You need to show that the total bond dipole, the total bond dipole that does not cancel off is heading to what direction. You can see that most of your bond dipole is going downward for this structure. Therefore, your net dipole moment will be downward. That is your net dipole moment. You need to have this, your resultant dipole moment. Okay? The name of this thing is called resultant dipole moment or we call it net dipole moment it's the same okay and since we have a resultant dipole moment or a net dipole moment therefore your dipole moment over here is not equals to zero when it's a not equals to zero which means your molecule will be a polar molecule all right and all that started is because your terminal atom are different when your terminal atom are different, your bond dipole does not cancel off each other. So when the bond dipole don't cancel off each other, you will have a resulting dipole moment. When you have a resultant dipole moment, your dipole moment not equals to zero, therefore it becomes a polar molecule. Let's try another example. I have trigonal bipyramidal on the screen. And the question that I give to you is PF5. So the same thing that we are going to check, since it's a basic geometry, therefore the shape will be symmetrical. We look at the terminal atom, all your terminal atom is the same. All is fluorine. So your terminal atom is the same. And we are going to look at the bond dipole between phosphorus and fluorine. Who is more electronegative? Fluorine. 
So your bond dipole will be heading to fluorine. For every single bond between phosphorus and fluorine, your bond dipole will be heading towards fluorine because fluorine is more electronegative. And since they are in the basic geometry, the terminal atom are the same. Your bond dipole will eventually can cancel off each other. And when the bond dipole can cancel off each other, your dipole moment automatically zero. When your dipole moment is zero, there will be no resulting dipole moment. So there will be no extra arrow down there. Okay. As a result, your molecule will be non-polar because your mu equals to zero. The bond dipole can cancel off each other. Last example, I have octahedral and my octahedral molecule given SCL F5. Shape again, symmetrical because it's a basic geometry. So all of the basic geometry will be symmetrical. Terminal atom, different. Again, the terminal atom is different. When the terminal atom is different, what happened to the bond dipole? Let's see. The bond dipole over here, sulfur and fluorine all moving towards fluorine because fluorine is more electronegative than sulfur. So your bond dipole will be towards fluorine. Sulfur and chlorine also towards chlorine because chlorine is more electronegative. But is our bond dipole able to cancel off each other? Simple. The bond dipole of this fluorine and this fluorine will cancel off each other because they are pulling on the opposite side. So one is pulling down there, one is pulling up there. So they will cancel off each other. And this fluorine also cancel off each other. Same thing because they are pulling in the opposite direction, in a symmetrical direction. So cancel off, cancel off. But this one, are they going to cancel off each other? No, they won't be able to cancel off each other. Why? Because one is fluorine, another one is chlorine. Fluorine and chlorine will have different electronegativity. Even though they are pulling on the opposite direction, but the strength that they are pulling are different. Fluorine is higher electronegativity, means fluorine will be pulling stronger than the chlorine. So when one is pulling stronger, one is less stronger, therefore fluorine win the game. And since fluorine is higher electronegativity, therefore the net dipole moment will be moving towards fluorine. The net dipole moment will be moving towards fluorine and your dipole moment cannot cancel off each other. When your bond dipole cannot cancel off each other, that's why you have a resulting dipole moment and your mu will not equal to zero because you cannot cancel off each other. So when not equal to zero, the molecule automatically become polar molecule. Make sense? That is what we mean by can cancel off and cannot cancel off. If they are symmetrical, your direction of pulling your direction of the bond dipole will be equal to each other in the opposite direction. So when they're in the opposite direction, they will cancel off each other. But if the terminal atom are different, then you cannot cancel off each other. Why? Because the bond dipole are having different strength. Okay, the pulling is that, but it's the different strength of pulling. So they won't be able to cancel off each other. And that's it about polarity. Simple. A bit of conclusion over here. There will be a non-polar molecule when mu equals to zero when you are having all your basic geometry because they are symmetrical geometry. With one condition, all your terminal atom must be the same. If your terminal atom is different, then your pooling strength your bond dipole strength will be different, okay? So when all the terminal atoms are the same, then the bond dipole will cancel off each other. So if you are having your basic geometry and all the terminal atoms are the same, it will automatically be non-polar molecule, mu equals to zero. Vice versa of it, if the terminal atoms are not the same, then it will be a polar molecule. Simple. As a kind reminder, when you want to determine the polarity, you must make sure your Lewis structure must be in the correct geometry. Your Lewis structure must be in the correct 
geometry. And that's it for this video about polarity. It's a very simple concept of polarity. You learn a few terms over here. Dipole moment, mu, bond dipole, and also resulting dipole moment or net dipole moment. So go and figure that out. Go and understand all these three and your polarity should be easy. At the end of the day, before you determine your polarity, you must have your Lewis structure in the correct geometry. Then only you can see whether the bond dipole able to cancel off each other or not able to cancel off each other. And thank you for watching. That's it for this video today. And don't forget to give me a like for this video and do subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.